Welcome back, Peck. I'm Streaker6 with the Halo Hounds. Are you new to DCS or just getting back into it after a breather from the sim and wondering just what modules should I buy? Not to worry. I'm here to help you figure out just what you need to get started, in my opinion. From aircraft to terrains, supporting modules, and more. Stick around to the end to get the most out of my suggestions for new or newer players. First, let's start off with what your PC has for storage space, as DCS can become a rather large storage hog in a hurry. I'd start off with having no less than 250 gigabytes of bespoke storage space for DCS alone. I'm currently over 600 gigabytes of storage space used for DCS and have nowhere near all the modules. So keep that in mind while you are making your choices if you have limited space available. If you don't have that kind of space right now, not to worry, it will just limit the amount of modules you'll be able to purchase or download for free without upgrading your SSD. Yes, I said SSD. In today's day and age, don't bother trying to play the higher end games on a hard drive. It will just cause undue frustration as the read times are just too slow to keep up. I'm not saying you need an NVMe.2, even a SATA 3 SSD is going to do just fine if you need to upgrade from a hard drive. Welcome to the channel, like and subscribe, click the bell, click the link. That's enough about storage, let's move on to the most important part. Which aircraft should I buy? That literally depends on you. Pick the aircraft you like the most. Whether it's a fixed wing, helicopter, high fidelity, aka clickable cockpit, or low fidelity, the Flaming Cliffs 3 aircraft with non-clickable cockpits, go with that. But first, before you purchase any aircraft modules in DCS, take it for a two-week trial. You can do that with a majority of all aircraft once every six months. If you decide you like the low fidelity aircraft, do not purchase them individually, as you will get six aircraft in your FC3 pack for 50 bucks, or 25 when it's on sale, or if it's your initial purchase. Let's touch on waiting for the sales real quick, now that I mentioned it. DCS has sales multiple times per year, and I suggest you wait for these sales before making purchases. This, of course, is after you make your initial purchase, which will give you an automatic 50% discount on all the modules that you purchase. Back to what aircraft to buy. Once you have trialed the aircraft of your choice and like it, stick with it until you master it, as it takes the average player quite is some time to get good at flying anymore? in this sim. You tell me. As you can tell by my videos, I'm certainly no prodigy when it comes to flying, especially in the fixed wings and it takes time and practice to get comfortable flying and learning all the different weapon systems and strategies involved for each individual vehicle. I know it may get very enticing to buy all sorts of different aircraft because all of them are very cool. But as I have found for myself at least, the Tomcat, Harrier, and FC3 pack are just now finally getting learned a year and a half or more after I initially bought them. If you are more of a meta player and want to buy the most popular for beginners aircraft, as it is multi-role, get the F-18 Hornet, as it still stands as the most recommended by the most experienced of players. I personally think the F-15 Strike Eagle by Razbam will take the crown for most recommended in the near future. Moving on to terrains and support modules. This one is going to be fairly quick, as I am a firm believer these are the most important modules to have after you have selected what aircraft you want to fly. Why? They will allow you to play on any multiplayer server or, if you like playing single player, to use any campaigns that are made for your bespoke aircraft. Whether it's a campaign you purchase from Eagle Dynamics or one you download for free from the community made missions and campaigns. You will start out with the Caucasus and Marianas maps as a part of the base game, 
and as such, many of the campaign makers and multiplayer servers use these maps as much as possible to accommodate players. The next most popular map is Syria for multiplayer gameplay, but I have a very big feeling the newly released Sinai map is going to take the number one spot there rather quickly. So I would pick up Syria and or Sinai as soon as you are able to, then gradually get the rest over time. As for supporting modules, if you have a carrier-based aircraft such as the Hornet or Tomcat, get the supercarrier with them, as it does make the game more immersive, even though you will not need to have it to do carrier operations. Combined arms is great if you want to move troops around a battlefield or would like to take control of a ground unit and play as a tanker or JTAC. The World War II Assets Pack is of course a must if you get a Warbird and like flying the old dogs, which are really fun also. As I wrote at the beginning, these suggestions are for the web version of the game. If you are on the Steam version right now, I would suggest transferring it over to the web version so that you can take advantage of all the extra benefits you get from not having the Steam version. In summary, Ensure you have plenty of storage space. Start out with and get good at one aircraft before buying another. Focus on buying all the terrains and supporting modules so that you are not limited to what servers or campaigns you can play. Do not use the Steam version. I hope you have all found my opinions helpful, and if I have missed anything or you have any questions, feel free to leave your feedback in the comments section below. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Streaker 6, out.